Hey everyone, it's Graphic back with another video, and today we're going to be talking a little bit about professions and skilling in Brighter Shores. So this is going to be a quick one. I just want to really mention some of the differences between pay-to-play as well as free-to-play when it comes to what skills you can actually train in this game. Just like RuneScape, there's going to be some blocked behind a paywall. We're going to kind of jump through what professions you get for free and what professions you are going to have to pay to play. And uh, this is kind of just going to be all based on the certain knowledge that we know now. And hopefully if you guys have any corrections, let me know down in the comments below of this video so we can get that uh, kind of fixed and hopefully let you guys know exactly what you are going to be able to play for free and then what you are going to have to pay for. So again, first thing we have is the episodes. We have four episodes, of course, with Hope Port, Hope Forest, Mine of Mantuban, and Chronopolis. We have four episodes as of now, and these come with certain skills in each episode. Of course, Hope Port is going to be coming with Fisher and Chef, Hope Forest, Number two, the episode number two, is going to be coming with Woodcutter and Scout. Of course, you are going to have combat skills related in these two episodes. So that's about five skills in total we're going to go with. Obviously, combat skills, we don't know exactly too much about that as of now. But we're just going to go with five skills. We're going to kind of tie in combat skills all into one. So Fisher, Chef, Woodcutter, Scout, and Combat Skills. Another one that we do know is going to most likely be in episode one and two from videos and clips. We have Carpentry. So that is going to be actually six unique skills in episode one and two. That means six unique skills you're going to get to play with in the free-to-play experience. So we actually saw clips and videos of the skills or professions going up to level 320 or 330 and that's great to see as it showcases that these skills have a lot of depth in them they're not going to just be hey let's do these three tasks until we hit the max level of 350 or 400 or 500 or whatever it is and there's actually some grind to them as well I know that uh, Andrew did talk about how there is going to be less grind or it's going to be less grindy of a game I'm excited to see what that means I, I do love grinding games myself but I'm sure there's going to be other kinds of grinds than just trying to max every skill to 99 so I'm excited Excited to see what that means as well. Uh, some of the big things I want to mention, though, is some of the you know pay-to-play uh, professions as well. So just a couple to name is miner, mine fighter, blacksmith, merchant, detective, leather worker, watch person, forger, alchemist, and stonemason. There is, of course, more than that in the game. We just don't have a list of all of the professions as of yet. So those are just to name a few. Some of the big things I want to mention as well are the skill capes because skill capes look really, really good in design. If you look at these X posts here, you can see um, these are X posts from Andrew Gower himself. Episode one with the chef and Fisher. Episode two with the scout and woodcutter. You have the episode three with mine fighter and blacksmith and episode four with watch person and merchant. These look really, really good. And you can actually see what they look like as well with this picture here. Um, this is going to be the fishing max cape it looks like. And it looks really, really good and detailed. So if you actually look at the free versus the premium pass, you can see that premium pass allows you to jump into all the episodes, gives you a unique character name, exclusive armor dies, and you can actually change your name for free when you have that premium pass. Um, but the one thing that they don't have is because it's delayed is the player to player trading. So many people actually may sit on the fence and actually play for free because you're going to be able to get that first episode and second episode, and you're going to have all these professions already that you can work on. So why not complete those first one episode, two episodes, and then jump into a premium pass? Unless you're going for a unique character name that you really want to make sure you get, there's really not a huge benefit in jumping into a premium pass right away. I will say that I'm probably going to jump into a premium pass right away, even though it doesn't make sense. But of course, after you get through episode one and episode two, and you're jumping to episode three or four, and you want to just jump into those professions right away without kind of, you know, continuing your efforts on Hope Port and Hope Forest, Premium Pass is going to be available, and uh, it's something that a lot of us are going to want to jump into. Hopefully, it's not too expensive. We'll see what the price is as it comes out. This whole video could be useless if it comes out and it's 99 cents a month, because at that point, obviously, you should be just getting the Premium Pass and just having you know your fun. But if it's 14.99 or something like that, then it is going to be something that we're going to have to think about every single day about how much is this premium pass worth it. So I will continue to update you guys on the premium pass versus the free to play professions and see if it's worth actually getting that premium pass in the release of the game. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.